Now let's do an example where we solve for displacement and acceleration from the velocity graph. So the first thing we need to do is take a good look at our velocity graph. And what we see is from 0 to 10 seconds, it's moving positively at a constant speed. From 10 seconds to 40 seconds, it speeds up. From 40 seconds to 60 seconds, it maintains a speed. From 60 to 90 seconds, the acceleration is negative. So let's take a real good look at this. Notice where the zero is, and this will help. The zero line is here. That means a velocity of zero, which means at this point here. So let's look at what this is it's significant. So we have our object slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, reaches zero. Then it goes to a negative velocity. That means this is the turning point where it turns around. That's significant. If it turns around, let's take a look what happens after that. It's negative, it's negative, it's negative, speeds up negatively, maintains a negative velocity, then slows down again, which means this position at the turn is where maximum displacement occurs. All right, now that we know where that's at, now let's look at getting to area. We, the reason why I'm saying area is because displacement is area under the velocity curve. So, what do we have? Let's chuck it up into things that make sense. We have rectangles and triangles. So what I'm going to do is split this up into a few simple shapes. Because I know the area of rectangles and I know the area of triangles. So I'm going to cut it up into this piece here. a triangle here, another rectangle here, and then another triangle there. So I split this velocity curve into four simple geometric shapes. So let's go ahead and start working on area the yellow area. Okay, we have a length of 60 seconds. And a height of 10 meters per second, which gives us a 600 meters of area. Now let's do the green area. This is a triangle, and remember the area of a triangle is one-half base times height, so it's one-half times, let's see, 20, 30 seconds. It's our base, and our height is from 10 to 40, so that means a height of 30 meters per second, which gives us an answer of 450 meters. Let's go to the light blue area. This is a rectangle, so we have 20 seconds as the base. For the length and the height is 30 meters per second, which gives us 600 meters. And now the purple area is another triangle. So it's one half base times height, so one half times the base of 20 seconds. And a height of 40 meters per second, which gives us an area of 400 meters. Now, these are all positive. So then all I have to do is add them up. So we will get for 
our total area or total displacement will be 2050 meters. That's the total displacement. Now let's take a look at the accelerations. Now, remember, we went backwards when we went velocity to displacement, that's areas. When we go velocity to acceleration, those are slopes. So let's look at the slopes here. This acceleration is a flat line, which means its rise over run is zero. Now let's take a look at the green section. Now in the green section, we get a rise of 30 meters per second, and we get a span of 30 seconds. So 30 meters per second divided by 30 seconds gives us an acceleration here of one meter per second squared. Now this flat line up here gives us an acceleration of zero because the rise over run is zero. Let's look at the purple. We have a span, a rise of, this one's a little, got more to it. So let's do, has a rise of 40 meters per second and its run is 20 seconds, which gives us an acceleration of two meters per second squared. And let's just go ahead and do the others. We have a flat line here, which gives us an acceleration of zero. And then we have this line, this very last line here. So this one we have an acceleration will be rise, which will be 20, well, it's positive, so it's 20 meters per second divided by a run of 10 seconds. Now let's do a typical kinematics question where we're asked about maximum height something will reach and the total time of flight, which means how long is it in the air? The very first thing we will do is draw our picture so we can keep track of our variables. So we know we have an initial velocity when it's kicked, it's going to go up and then fall back down. All right. We, at maximum height, we have is where it turns around, so there's our max height position. We also know something else about the velocity at maximum height h. If it's at a maximum height, that means the ball is neither moving up or down, which means the velocity at this position must be zero. That's what maximum means. We also know that this is a projectile, which means as it's flying through the air, the only acceleration it's feeling is from gravity. So now let's do our variables. We know the initial velocity is at 20 meters per second. We also know the velocity at maximum height h is zero because remember it's not moving up or down at that point. We know the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second. Now let's talk about why I'm doing the sign convention. I make a good practice of declaring which way my sign convention is going to be. So I'm declaring up as positive, which means down must be negative. And since gravity points down, it's negative but the initial velocity points up, that will make it positive. So we wanna know what the maximum height is, so that's one of the variables, and total time of flight, there's the other variable. Okay, let's focus on maximum height. When we look at our kinematics equations versus our variables, the one thing we notice is we don't have time to get to max height, which means Let's try to avoid equations with time, which leaves us with the velocity squared version. 
So velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus twice acceleration displacement. All right. We have final velocity is zero. We know the initial velocity is at 20. We know the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the thing we want is displacement. So this displacement is the same as height. Remember, height is just vertical displacement. All right. Now let's do some other simplifications. We also know that the height and velocity at, we also know that at maximum height, the velocity is zero, which then further simplifies our equation. So knowing this, now let's algebraically solve for height. So we end up getting height equals negative initial velocity squared over twice acceleration. Let's plug and chug. So we get negative 20, 20 meters per second squared. 20 squared, I mean, to be clear. Divide by twice, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now notice what happens. This negative and that negative makes things positive. So that will make the height positive or upward, which is ex which makes sense. And when we look at the units and divide through, the units left will give us meters, which is exactly what we need. So everything's looking good. So now all we have to do is plug and chuck. And we will get an answer of 20.4 meters high. The second question is time of flight. There's a couple of ways to get to this, but I'm going to give you what I think is one of the nicer ones. Now, I'm going to call this final velocity. I'm just going to call this fi uh, final velocity. So velocity f. Now the question is, what is this? Well. The distance up and the distance down are identical. The acceleration up and the acceleration down are identical, which means the magnitude of the velocities are identical because of symmetry. It's just the directions that are different. So now we also know this. The velocity final as it reaches the ground is going to be negative 20 meters per second, which means now we can use this equation, velocity final equals velocity initial plus acceleration times time. Let's solve for time, which will be velocity final minus velocity initial over acceleration. Now, it is very important to make sure the sign conventions are kept because that means the numerator will be negative 40 because neg tw negative 20 minus 20 is negative 40. So please be careful about that. And then negative 9.8 meters per second squared is our denominator. Our negatives cancel because hopefully you realize negative time makes no sense. So if you get a negative time, go back and verify your equations. Or, if the equations look good, verify your sign conventions. And which gives us a total time of flight of 4.1 seconds.